Welcome to Talk to Al Jazeera. I'm Barnaby Phillips in the Greek capital, Athens, in the office of the Prime Minister, George Papandreou. This country is at the center of a major financial crisis. It's been offered more than 100 billion euros in support from the IMF and other European Union countries. In return, Mr. Papandreou says he will implement a severe austerity program with big cuts in public spending. He says there is no alternative, otherwise Greece would face a catastrophe. Prime Minister George Papandreou, thank you very much for speaking with us here on Talk to Al Jazeera. You're trying to you. introduce quite radical changes to your country, and there is opposition. We, we've seen it on the streets of Athens. The scepticism, certainly, on the financial markets. We're seeing that all the time now. Still, many observers saying that ultimately this country may have to default, it may have to restructure its debt. Is that still a danger for Greece? Well, first of all, on the skepticism of whether we can make the changes, I think that's uh, a normal, healthy skepticism because, yes, Greece did have a credibility gap, but that's exactly what we're changing in Greece. And uh, the fact that we've taken these emergency measures has shown our determination and our will. And I would say they do hurt, and I very much understand the protests. Uh, but at the same time, I think people are determined because of the pain to say never again. Let's really make these changes. Let's make Greece a viable economy and a competitive c economy. So people are really behind major changes. Obviously, it'll take some time to show the results. That's why we needed the support mechanism from the European Union and the IMF to give us that oxygen, if you like, that time, so that the implementation of the measures will actually show uh, that we can, we are a credible country. Already, just the first quarter, we have reached a 42% reduction uh, of deficit compared to last year. So we're not only on target, we're beyond target, and I believe we can continue that to the end of this year. So yes, there's a de determination, and this is why we can say um, uh, restructuring is, is not our option. As you will know, some of the economic criticisms, without getting too technical, are that the measures you've introduced could well end up being very deflationary. They are bound to push Greece even deeper into recession. And that ultimately will make it harder, impossible, some people say, for this country to pay off its debts. Well, I think it's right that the, this is a stability and growth program. And if you only have a stability program, then you just have deflation. And then you, would, in fact, don't become, uh, you don't move out of this, of, the, of this crisis. So the other side of this is growth. Now, growth means a number of things. First of all, uh, creating an environment for investment, and that's what we're doing. We are cutting down a lot of the, the, the blockages, if you like, bureaucratic uh, problems, huge bureaucracy which we had, which didn't now help investment. Uh, also creating new opportunities, because I believe that we have a chance in this climate change problem that we are facing around the world, and the Mediterranean in particular, to actually turn our model around, our, our developmental model around, and make it uh, make Greece a not only viable, but a, but a very Im important investment place. What investors want to see is, uh, is this economy going to be a competitive economy? Now, if they see the Greece of yesterday, I understand they're saying this is not a viable economy. But we're talking about a different Greece with, with a very different prospect. Well, then, uh, I mean, surely a competitive Greece, and yes, Greece does have advantages, but logically what a country would do in these circumstances is devalue its currency. But you can't do that because you're trapped in the euro. The euro has its pros and cons, but it does create uh, a sense of, of, of security for investment. Uh, it has helped growth in Greece. And uh, uh, as we are restructuring, we are creating a, a, uh, a new environment for investment. And this is what uh, I think the combination of both the eurozone, but also a a new possibility for a competitive economy. I think th that combination is a very positive combination in the end. But the Eurozone seems to be under enormous strain at the moment, and many people are saying, um, in fact, you know, an economy like Greece is, is so different to an economy like, like Germany. Do, do you actually see the Eurozone in danger of breaking up at this point? What is needed in the world, first of all, is more cooperation, and more integration in a globalized economy. We see that we need to have uh, close cooperation in order to deal with global challenges. That's why we need more Europe, not less. We need greater integration, not less. We need more governance, 
not less governance in the, in the economic But yoking field. countries and together seems to be increasing uh, political tension, say. Well, this is exactly why we need governance. This is exactly to see where there are disparities, where there are difficulties, where there are institutional gaps, if you like, because we did have an institutional gap. Uh, the Maastricht Treaty, the Eurozone Treaty, did not um, uh, prepare us for a crisis. And therefore, we had to create an ad hoc solution. We worked very hard. Greece worked very hard with our partners, of course, in the European Union. Uh, it took some time, but it was very quick for what institutions in Europe are used to, to create this mechanism, a support vehicle, uh, which is uh, very close to 1 trillion euros, uh, to support economies to go through a difficult period, to uh, revamp their economies, make the necessary uh, changes, possibly take some emergency measures, but in fact, make the economies more competitive. Angela Merkel the other day said that with the benefit of hindsight, Greece should not have been allowed into the Euro in 2000. Do you agree with her? We did well to be in the Eurozone. Uh, we needed to make big, important reforms to become competitive, particularly in the last five or six years. I would say uh, we had a growth uh, of close to 5% wh when we got into the Eurozone. But at the same time, uh, this growth was uh, helped very much by the fact that the Euro did give us cheaper money. But uh, cheaper money did not necessarily mean that we made the structural reforms to become competitive in the long run. That was the opportunity we missed. And now we have to do this at a much quicker rate and with emergency measures. That's what we're going through right now. But we're, we're doing it. And, uh, and with hindsight, we could have done it in a much more gradual and normal way. You must have been very frustrated about the, the pace of reaction. You've been going back and forth to, to Brussels and, and Strasbourg and Berlin for, for months this year, um, waiting for action. It seems that Europe reacts very, very slowly. It's very difficult to get coordinated action from, from so many different governments. I would say, yes, Europe is maybe slow if we look at what, how the markets react, because the markets are very quick. But on the other hand, if we didn't have these institutions, if we didn't have uh, this cooperation, if we didn't have the capability to intervene when the markets were very volatile, uh, that would be a, then we would have real catastrophe. So I think we need more Europe, and we need to see that our institutions need to be more quick in responding, but at the same time, create the necessary rules around uh, our global financial system, and I would say other challenges too, to make sure that things don't get out of hand and we don't have crises every few years. We, you have been very critical of, of the markets and the global financial systems, but to a certain extent, don't they just reflect ordinary people's fears at the other end, if you like? There are people who have invested in Greece. It could be pension funds in Scotland. It could be decent banks in Germany and France. And there are genuine fears that they won't get their money back. And you complain about speculators, but sometimes I feel that people in Greece forget that there are real individuals at the other end who, who stand to lose if, if this country were to go bankrupt. Absolutely. I think that the, w w w what we're saying is that the markets can be a very important tool, but uh, we need to make sure that this tool does help in, uh, in, in um, uh, moving changes along in a way which are, which are, which are correct and, and, and structured and, uh, and regulated and, and not so volatile. I think what we have here is we have a fear that has developed because of the 2008 crisis, a lot of risk-averse uh, activity, where self-fulfilling, where, where prophecies become self-fulfilling, where a fear then becomes a reality, and that is what we need to stop, because that, in fact, does not allow for a normal, ongoing economy, not only in our country and other countries, to move al along in a normal way and make the necessary changes to in fact become a viable economy and to uh, deal with the logical and, and rational aspirations of many investors who say, yes, we want to make sure that you are a viable economy. I will say, yes, we were not a viable economy, but we're making the changes, so give us the chance. Thank you, Prime Minister. I'm just going to cut you off there. We're going to take a short break here in Athens. We're talking to George Papandreou, the Greek Prime Minister, and we'll be back straight after the break. Welcome back to Talk to Al Jazeera. I'm Barnaby Phillips in Athens, and I'm talking to the Greek Prime Minister, George Papandreou. Mr. Papandreou, we've been talking about reaction across the world markets. Let's talk about Greek society. It's a time of 
incredible strain in this country. When you see situations like thousands of people outside Parliament chanting thieves, uh, swearing at the, at the members as they try and enter, it, it, it just seems that there's a complete breakdown of trust in this country between the governed and, and the governing at the moment. Well, we came as a new government in with a mandate of change. Uh, we were talking about... Uh, a, new, a new government, but an old party, very much part of the system. A very new government and a party that has been revamped. We have made changes. We were in the opposition. I was took, took over to make changes. We had a uh, very strong party platform for change, and we knew what the problems were. We talked about these problems for years as opposition. We were talking about the fact that we have to move away from a clientelistic politics. We have to move away from uh, lack of transparency. We have to revamp the political system for to be more accountable. We have to make sure that people have trust in our and, society. And PASOK, historically, and PASOK your party had been part of that problem. PASOK has been a party of change. In 1981, we came in for the first time after 40 years, basically a, a, a progressive government uh, uh, with, with a small brief uh, uh, period in the 60s when again there was a progressive government. So it, PASOK has been a party of change. But if with all and respect, so if, if you talk to Greeks, they'll tell you that this, the period of, of clientelism, if you like, and a, a huge state, uh, almost a parasitic state, that grew a lot in the 1980s. In fact, it grew when, you're, when your father was prime minister. I, I mean, there's an amazing irony in a way to what you're trying to achieve now. Two different things here, and I think it has to be very clear. Uh, it's very different when Pasho came to power to say, we are going to put money in creating a health system. We're going to put money in making sure that we have uh, unemployment benefits. We're going to put money to make sure that there's a better pension system. Yes, money was put into that. and. Uh, that was, I think, a necessary change, which, in fact, spurred economic growth. That helped Greece become part of the Eurozone, and we did so on our merit. Um, the, what happened in the last six years is we had uh, added to our debt 100 billion euros, which is a huge, a huge, huge uh, uh, um, debt, uh, growth of debt. And that was in the previous five, six years. So it's easy to go back and do criticism, uh, and one can talk about the necessary changes in the past. We could have we made some, maybe some missed opportunities, but the real problem was that we had a conservative government. Uh, unluckily, uh, the neoconservative government, not only in Greece but in other countries such as in the United States, they in fact created big government, a lot of waste, uh, a lot of help for big business. So big government helping big business or special interests. In the end. Uh, created a huge uh, uh, lack of trust, but also a, uh, a very big deficit. We had tax cuts, we had clientelism, we had graft. These are the things we're changing, and we, have, we are absolutely determined. So I agree with these people that are out on the roads and, and saying, out in the street and saying, you know, we have to change the political system, we have to change these, we have to make, uh, make changes in, in, in governance in our country. That's what we're doing. And, and, that's, and, that, and that is the mandate we had and we, uh, when we were elected in, in, well, in October. Well, well, sure, the fact that we, are, we have been dealing with the economic crisis for six months doesn't mean that we haven't forgotten that in the long run, if we don't make these changes, Greece will continue to be in a crisis, and that's why we're determined to make these changes. Well, what I've heard a lot on the streets from people who are in favor of changing Greece yeah. is that the way you are going about it is not fair, that you are hurting very hard pensioners, Teachers, people who are on 1,000 euro a month, uh, decent, hard-working people, some in, in the public service as well, nurses, uh, people who are seeing maybe you know 1,000 euro becoming 800 euro, and the refrain you hear again and again is, "I did not create this mess. Why should I pay for it?" Are you not sympathetic to that? Absolutely, I'm very sympathetic with that, because uh, what happened is the fact that we had tax evasion. Uh, the fact that we had tax cuts for the rich, the fact that we had, uh, unluckily, a lot of lack of transparency, clientelism, and even graft, uh, meant that money was lost, money was not put in the right areas, in the right, uh, was not invested well, uh, money was not productive, uh, there was a lot of parasitic activity rather than productive activity, and uh, uh, we faced a situation where we had to take emergency measures. We faced a situation where we were almost not able to pay for even the basic wages and pensions 
in our country because we could not borrow on the markets. So we had to take these emergency measure measures. And these emergency measures, yes, did hurt even people who were not responsible for this crisis. And will and hurt I them even more in the months to come. And I recognize that. But that's why we're changing the tax system. That's why we're, we're talking about a redistribution of wealth. And we're doing that with the new tax system. That's why we're talking about growth. That's why we're talking about investment. That's why we're talking about new jobs. That's why we're talking about transparency, putting signatures of all ministerial decisions and, and public servant decisions on the web so that people know where their euros go and know where their money goes. So, uh, and that's why we're also being very clear that you know, people, uh, uh, the rule of law uh, is, is does not allow for, for those that simply have power or, or somebody in power to be able to, to, to avoid So uh, no, to avoid no fear and favors, you'll, you'll go Absolutely. after the rich and powerful. Meritocracy is something we've brought in, in employment, transparency in government, and these are major changes we have been making these last six months. When I talk to people on the streets, they say, oh, George Papandreou, he, he's the prime minister who, who promised us our salaries would go up during the election campaign. And once in power, he did the, he did the exact opposite. That seems to be the perception of you at the moment. Yes, well, I think nobody understood the magnitude of this crisis. You, you had no idea? We knew that there was, a, there was lack of transparency. We knew that there was a, a bigger deficit than was being uh, was being uh, reported. Uh, we didn't know what it w the, deep, the depth of the problem, nor the reaction of the markets, uh, which were very volatile uh, in this in this critical critical point. Uh, if we were in, didn't have the crisis of 2008, maybe there would have been a much more normal uh, procedure in the way we would have been able to have time, take more time to make these changes in a way which didn't allow, didn't need the immediate emergency measures. But uh, I would say we had a choice between. Uh, saving the existing salaries uh, with by making some cuts or not being able to pay them at all. So that was not really much of a choice there. But the fact that there was money, there was money, but it wasn't used well, is a, is a truth. And that, uh, that's what I was saying. When we, when we borrowed $100 billion the last five years, I say, well, where, where did it go? Did it go into green investment? Did it go into, uh, into health and education? No. It went into unluckily, very non-transparent activities. That is what we have to fight, because I think this is not only a Greek problem. It is a problem of the strengthening of our democratic institutions, so we make sure that they are not captured by special interests. One of the most shocking things about the Greek economy is the amount of money that you spend on weapons. Is that going to change? I hope so very much that uh, we will be able to uh, deal with our neighbor in a peaceful way. So it's all to do with Turkey, the, we the weapons? Menu. Yes, I think that in order to lower military expenditures, me it means we really have to have breakthrough in our relations with Turkey. I'm working on that. We're working on that. You, you and just we, just had, we just had a, a very important visit. And uh, it's not, it wasn't a uh, run-of-the-mill visit. It was a very, as in his words, Tayyip Erdogan's words, a historic visit. We, uh, and you talked we about reducing defense expenditure we, we, with We him. not only signed 22 uh, agreements, which is also historical, uh, we talked about the reduction of arms. And I think that if we can find ways to reduce the tension in the Aegean, delineate our continental shelf, which has been a controversial issue, this, uh, these things will allow us to move forward to reduction of in, 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 in weapons. And I think that's, that's something that both our countries uh, want and, and have the political will to do. Because m many Greek observers I know feel that the high defense expenditure is, is part of the, the corruption that has flourished in, in, in this country. I mean, Greece would be no exception if huge arms contracts are linked with people siphoning off lots of money on the side. There have been cases uh, in the past, and uh, that is an one other reason why uh, not only do we want the arms reductions, but we have brought in new procedures concerning procurement. Uh, this will go through Parliament. There will be open discussion and very transparent uh, procedures for any types of procurements from now on. And that ha not only has to do with, with, with uh, uh, arms, but it has to do with any procurements uh, for the, from the public sector. We're putting them on uh, electronic, if you like, or internet procurements so that they can be online, very clear, very open, very transparent. I think we will be one of the most transparent countries, uh, not only in Europe, but in the world. You've also made quite a concerted drive recently for investment from, from the Middle East, for, from Arab countries. 
if I was cynical, I would say it's because maybe you can't get it anywhere else. U Europeans aren't flooding here to put money in at the moment. Maybe Americans aren't as well. Is that, is that the attraction of the Arab countries for you? I think that the, there is a worldwide interest in, in, in looking for new investments around the world. The question is, can Greece become attractive? So uh, we are uh, at this point at, at, a, at, a, at a turning point where we are uh, making the changes and creating the atmosphere and the environment for investment. And I would say Greece is, uh, is uh, uh, becoming a, a, a country which I think is leading the way, even in Europe, in the measures it's taking, difficult measures, and the changes it's making in order to become a very competitive economy. When people are turning on their TVs at the moment, they're seeing uh, you know, buildings burning downtown and police firing tear gas. And I, I just read in the, in, the, in the newspaper the other day that perhaps tourism arrivals overall are down 10%. Greece might seem a pretty scary, dangerous place to come right now. Uh, it's very easy to have one picture and then to say that that's the, the total of Greece. No, it's obviously a moment in history where people are unhappy. I mean, it's a democratic right to protest. But it has nothing to do with tourism. Uh, and I would, I would uh, uh, appeal to, to those who, who do love Greece and do want to come that uh, uh, they should do so. And they will find a Greece which is, uh, yes, in a moment of, I would say, creativity and, uh, and desire to move forward. And, and they'll get that, that real determination that Greece wants to change. So it's a creative crisis then? We need to make this, crea this crisis a moment of creativity, a moment of opportunity. And that's what I'm determined to do. Prime Minister George Papandreou, thank you very much for speaking thank with you us very on much. Talk to Al Jazeera. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.